Hi guys, we're here on uh, part 4 of our reading. This packet book entitled Backyard Horses, written by Dundee Dali Makal. Okay, so let's continue. We're on page, on page, okay. On part 11, okay, part 11, uh, entitled Teamwork, okay. So let's continue guys. Okay, while dad continues to rave about about mom's bravery bravery and his great blessing in finding a wife like her, I give Ethan an update in sign. We drive through crazy lorries and get ice cream to celebrate. Then we head for the cat farm to check on the pinto. At the barn, Ethan, Mom, and I climb out of the car. Careful not to step on cats, Mom warns. Dad stays put. I'll be along. I'll be along as soon as I finish my fudge Sunday. He promises. The minute we step into the barn, a dozen, a dozen cats. A dozen cats scatter. Then I hear it that nicker. I glance back at Ethan and realize he can't hear it. And for one of the few times ever, I feel sorry for my brother. This is one sound I can begin to describe to him. Ethan helps me pull down a bale of hay even though I'm not sure the pinto touched what we left last night. I try to get her to eat out of my hand. She nibbles at it but doesn't seem hungry. When dad comes in, I think we're going to leave. But he takes one look at the pinto and says, Is that a horse sick? She is so skinny. I check the pinto's eyes and hooves. She doesn't look sick. I wish she could tell us what's wrong. Mary Louise had the vet out this morning just to make sure the horse is okay before we send her off again. Mom reports she gave her a clean bill of health. Only thing wrong with her is the is that she needs to put on weight. Okay. We should try feeding her oats, I suggest. I slip into the stall with her. I bet she'd go for omelette. What's that? Dad asked. It's it's like oats, but with bran and flax and oils. It smells like molasses. We learned about it in four dust each. I thought it smelled good enough to eat. Why don't I get? Why don't I go get some? Dad says. Really? I'm surprised. I didn't think he liked horses. It's the least I can do for that. Poor horse, he answers. I'm pretty sure the farmer's supply stays open until 9. Dad leaves and Dad leaves, leaves and the rest of us conduct a barn search for brushes. Ethan finds an old horse brush and hands it to me. I set to work. Dust flies up the the mare with every stroke of the brush. I use my fingernails to loosen some of the mud clumps. Meanwhile, mom tackles the horse's tangled, tangled mane and tail. She uses her own comb, comb. She uses her own comb on some of the burrs. Ethan unties the lead rope I attach to the feed through the pinto wouldn't move around while we brush her. What are you doing? I asked him, shoving the brush under my arm so I can sign. Ethan doesn't answer. Instead, he begins retying the rope. Ethan, I demand. He points at me and signs. Overhand not, but he ties the rope like I had it and shakes, shakes his head. He is probably right, but it's the only knot I know. Square knot, Ethan signs, then he makes a knot that really does look like a square. He unties the square knot and whips the rope into a knot shaped like a cursive capital S. Half each, he signs. I'll teach you that one later. I watch as my little brother unties the half 
half each and starts over. This time he makes two loops with the rope, twists them twice, then feeds the lead rope through a hook at the end of the of the trough. When he jerks the rope, it doesn't slip. It's tied tight. Cat's paw, he signs. Nothing my brother does surprises me. I give him a thumbs up and go back to brushing. I reach, I reach the funny saddle shaped spot on the pinto's back. I brush the hairs backward to get at the dust. Then smooth down the coat. Mom, I've been thinking. Hmm? I move down the mare's foreleg. What if, instead of sending the horse away, you guys keep, keep her here? Here? You'd be putting a toad in a ticket tail, kiddo. Mom laughs a little. Honey, this is a cat farm. Mary Louise doesn't like horses. She's terrified the horse might accidental, accidentally step on one of the kittens. What's going to happen to her, Ethan signs. Mom stops uh, coming the pinto's mane. We've been making calls, nothing settled yet. I guess the last place only had the horse for three days before sending her to us. They don't want her back. They won't send her to animal control, will they? Ethan asks. The idea makes my stomach and heart flip over in trade places. No, of course not, mom answers. But mom doesn't run the fat calm. We brush in calm in silence until dad gets back with the feed right away the pinto noses the omelet well look at you dad exclaims when she actually nibbles the grain he looks as proud as if he has baked it in himself we walk to the car in moonlight it's quite it's quite except for a hole that could be a coyote we have a few out in the country around here I glance back at the pinto. Her face is lit by the single light bulb we've kept on in the barn for her. She's watching us leave, her head leaning out over the stall door, but she doesn't nicker. I can't help wondering if she knows she won't be staying here long. Maybe she figures we're not e ever coming back. I'm bone tired when I climb climb into the into bed but it takes me a long time to fall asleep i ask god to find a good home for the pinto before long they thought turn to the hamilton royal horse show all year i wait for it now it's only a week away and each year i pray that next time i'll have a horse of my own to ride in the show but here we are again and still no horse dear god i pray as as I drip off to sleep, there's a lot about praying that I don't understand. I know you. You can do anything, so how come you haven't done this? Please, by this time next year, will you let me have my own horse to ride in the show? And thanks for not getting tired of me asking. I've given up crying and begging my parents. So you're all I've got. I know you're all I need. It's just that it's getting harder to keep praying for a horse that never comes. Right before I fall asleep, I gaze out the window and imagine my prize-winning black stallion galloping in the moonlight. Only this time, uh, he's galloping away from me. The week of the horse show, it seems like... Our whole town is getting ready for it. Cold and I help Mr. Harper scrap the board and burns of the jumps gel set around the fair, fair round, fairground arena. Other kids in Florida State string up little wild flags all the way around the horse show ring. Every day after school, Ethan and I do our homework. I write up two thirds of my horse report, the failure of crying and begging. Then we bike to the cat farm to check on the pinto. On Thursday, on our way to the barn, where we're, we're passed by half a dozen small white trucks with 
fair food written on the sides. Lemonade, onion rings, elephant ears, Italian sandwiches, hot dogs. Only two more days until the horse show. Mom's car is parked next to the barn when we get there. My first thought is that something has happened to the Pinto. I jump off my bike before it comes to a stop. Mom? Ethan drops his bike next to mine. He's saying something, but I can't take the time to stop and see what he's saying. Mom, what's that? I, I run. I run into her just inside the barn. Whoa, she puts her hand on my head. What, what is it, Ellie? I stick my head around her until I can see the corner stall. The pinto is there, matching on green. I thought something was wrong. Why are you here, Mom? Mom steps aside. I work here on Thursdays, remember? Right, Thursday is cat farm. Guess I... I forgot. I thought something bad had happened to the pinto. Still, I walk back to the corner, stole to see for myself. Ethan catches up to me. That's what I was trying to tell you. I give the pinto a generous meal of omelin. I like watching her to go after it, but I can still count her ribs. I pull out the hoof pick I bought at the supply store. I paid for it with my own money. Guess I might as well clean out her hooves. The pinto's ears flick to the sides. That means she is relaxed and she stays that way even when I get in the stall with her. Her hooves are in great shape. That paid off. Farrier, the guy who takes care of horses' hooves to come out and do a hoof trim. He clipped the hooves so they're even all the way around, but he told that she didn't need shoes or anything else unless she'd, she'd be on a gra gravel. All I had to do now is clean the gunk from the underside of the hooves. I used the I use the pick to get at the V-shaped groove on the sole. Ethan teaches me how to tie a slip knot with a quick release. In an emergency, I could yank the end and untie the knot. When are you, are you going to name her? He signs. I put down the back of half and take a minute before answering. It's not like I haven't thought about names. It's pretty awkward calling her the Pinto. Finally, I shake my head. No name. I don't want us to get too attached. Right, he signs. They smirk on his face, speaking louder than his fingers. When mom finishes spitting thoughts, she helps Ethan and me uh, with the pinto's mane and tail. Ethan signs to mom. Any news on a home for... Uh, he glances at me and punches the air for the rest of uh, his question. The Pinto? I've got a lead on a nice shelter in Indiana, Mom reports. And one in Virginia. I'd better find a spot soon. Though Mary Louise is as nervous as a turkey at Thanksgiving. She wants his horse off her cat farm. Okay, Friday before the horse show, I end up sitting across from Ashley and Larissa in the cafeteria. I listen to their plans about which outfits they'll wear at the show. A bunch of the four Dust H kids are entering the junior horsemanship class. It's the class with the biggest trophy. But everybody knows the winner will be Larissa or Ashley, probably Larissa. She has won the last two years in a row. Just when I'm sure Larissa and Ashley don't realize I'm at the stable with them, Ashley turns to me. Are you coming to the horse show, Ellie? I never miss it. And that's the truth. Every year, Colt and I watch it together. I hope he is planning to go again because I'm counting on catching a ride with him. My parents have to go to some Cub Scout thing with Ethan. Larissa leaves without saying goodbye. Then again, I guess she never said hello. Colt flops down beside me. So, Ashley, can you beat Larissa this year? Ashley shrugs. I haven't thought that much about it, I guess. I've been too nervous about reading Warrior in the Jumper class. It's my first time jumping in a show. 
That is so cool, I exclaimed. It's hard not to be jealous of Ashley. Every single day I imagine riding my black stallion over John's, but I've never actually jumped a horse. I think Dad is more excited about the horse show than I am. Ashley says, Honestly, I think I'd enjoy watching more than showing. Cole turns to me, Are you going? I frown, I frown at him. What do you think? He nods and walks off. I catch up with him outside our classroom. Colt, are you going to the horse show or not? Can I ride with you? Of course. Colt makes a face. Girls, he mutters, uh, shuffling into class. Boys, I mumble, aging past him to get there, there first. Jeans in a plaid western shirt. If I can't be in the horse show, at least I can look the part. Mom and Dad and Ethan file by me on their way to the car. I give Ethan a thumbs up on his Cub Scout uniform. He gives me a thumbs up on my cowboy gear. Are you sure you'll be alright until we get home? Dad asked. I point to the St Stevens's car backing out of their drive. Here they come now. I wave goodbye to my family and jog across the street. Colt motions me into the back seat with him. Mrs. Stevens is driving. No, Mr. Stevens and no Shara. Thanks again for the leave, I tell her. Colt mom's, Colt's mom looks like she's going to a board meeting instead of a horse show. Her hair is twisted into a fancy knot and she's wearing a blue suit with a straight skirt. You look nice, Mrs. Stevens. Thank you, Ellie. She says, and you look very horsey. I'm not sure if that's a compliment, but I think her just in case. Isn't Mr. Stevens coming? I'd ask about Shara, but Cole's sister says horses are for little kids. Cole's mom laughs, at least I think it's a laugh. Actually, it sounds a little more like a snort. Dad didn't make it home this weekend. Cold explains. Anyway, he doesn't really like horse show. Uh, he doesn't really like horse shows. His mother mutters something under her breath, but I don't catch it. I think I'm glad I didn't hear. Uh, Colt glances at me, then stares out the window. The sun is still out, but a bank of gray clouds is moving in. I sure hope it doesn't rain, I say. Four years ago, the horse show got rained out. I can't stand the silence in this car. I never know what to say around Colt's parents. Colt told me once that my parents are easier to talk to than he is, even for him. Mm, it's nice that you like horse shows. Mrs. Stevens, I try, I wish my parents did right. She says, giving me the same, uh, the same is not love as before. Cole explains in sign language, keeping his hands where his mom can't see in the rear, v rear view mirror. Mom hates horses. She's only going because her boss has a daughter in the show. I nod. I'm pretty sure my dad doesn't know that Miss Warden has a daughter in the horse show. How come Mrs. Stevens knows about the boss daughter and my dad doesn't? What else does she know that dad doesn't? What else is she doing to make sure she gets that promotion and my dad does not? Mrs. Stevens turns to loose on the horse show ground and tell us, tells us to come to the car after the show is over. That's the great thing about living in a small town like Hamilton. Our parents know that other kids' parents will keep an eye on us. Colt and I leave Mrs. Stevens putting on more makeup in her rear view mirror. Let's claim our seats, Colt shouts as he takes off running. Wait up, wait up, I holler. Let's check out the horses first. He stops and comes back. Good idea. At least he's not dumping me for his buddies. Then again, Colt's buddies wouldn't be caught dead at a horse show. Uh, we tread our way through the maze of horse trailers park and the fairgrounds. Most of the license plates are Missouri and Kansas, but we spot Iowa, Illinois, and Kentucky. There's Ashley and her new hunter. 
vehicles leads the way to the harbor, harbor's four-horse trailer. The bay gelding is tied to one side of the trailer. He, cr he cranes his royal neck around, taking it all in. It's noisy around here with horses and uh, nearly neighing, people shouting and music blaring from the speakers, but he doesn't seem nervous. As Liz Hunter, Hancock's warrior is about the most beautiful horse I've ever seen up close. If he were black and a uh, stallion, he might even be my dream horse. As Liz steps out of the track cab where she changes her outfits for different classes, she looks like she's stepping off the cover of horse and rider. Hi Colt, hey Ellie, I'm so glad you guys came, I'm getting really nervous. Colt and I tell her how fantastic her hunter is, we ask her about the classes she has entered. She answers all our questions but I get the feeling we're more excited about the show than she is. Hey you too. Mr. Huffer walks up, carrying two plastic cups, His, uh, he hands one to Ashley and she takes a sip. Only we were just talking about you, he says about me. I was thinking that maybe next year you'd like to ride one of our horses in the horsemanship class. Are you kidding? I can't believe he's saying this. It wouldn't be the same as showing my own. Showing my own horse, but it would be pretty sweet. Every horse Mr. Harper owns is a show horse. Each one comes from a long line of winners. That would be unbelievable. A glance at Ashley and she's grinning. Dad says, sure, you're his star pupil. His star pupil? Even if they're, they are just saying that to make me feel good, it works. Then I know it's cold. What about cold, Mr. Harper? I was just getting to that. He turns to Colt. You've been doing great with Galahad. Do you think you'd like to work him on the barrels? See if you could get him ready by next year. Galahad is the young quarter horse gilding. He's an easy ride and Colt likes riding western. Colt's eyes about, wow, but he's rugged. Sure, that would be alright. Good. You two keep practicing. By next year, Ashley is going to have some stiff competition. Dad, Ashley scolds. I'd better get to work. Her dad disappears inside the trailer. When he comes out, he's leading Ashley, Ashley's three gated mare, Cindy Lou. This is the horse she'll ride when she competes against Larissa and Castor's darling delight. We'd better go, I say, because I know they need to get ready. We'll be cheering for you. Thanks, you. Thanks, you guys. Ashley calls after us. As we leave to find seats, I try not to be jealous. I tell God I'm sorry for wishing I could be Ashley, Ashley right now and have the horse, have the horses she has. Even though God already knows how I feel, it helps me to tell him. Then I add, and thanks for Mr. Har Harper wanting me to ride his horse, but would you please let me have my own horse to ride in the show next year? Right before the show starts, Colt points across the arena. There's Larissa. Larissa is checked out in an e 